I have been using Linux on my desktop PC exclusively since 2023, and it's been a very pleasant experience so far. My daily computer usage is quite simple though. I mainly do three things on my PC, web browsing, video and photo editing, and gaming. This means that I don't really need a lot of software for my work and entertainment. In fact, I can easily survive with no more than five applications. The only apps that I consider essential are Firefox, DaVinci Resolve, Steam, and perhaps OBS for this YouTube channel. This short list of essential apps is the main reason why I can use Linux as my only operating system without dual booting. Of course, I have to make some compromises and adjustments, changing some of my computing habits, because you just can't expect Linux to be exactly the same as Windows or Mac OS. What I'm saying is that Linux has been very capable for me over the past two years and I never thought of switching back to Windows on my desktop PC. Until recently, I noticed many YouTubers talking about an app called Lossless Scaling. It is an app on the Steam Store that allows you to upscale game resolution and enables frame generation for any GPU, which didn't sound very exciting at first, at least to me. Out of curiosity, I tried it on my Lenovo laptop, which has both Windows and Linux installed. I wasn't very impressed mainly because of the input latency from the frame generation, and perhaps because gaming on a laptop is never a good experience anyway. For the frame generation to work, it also throttled down the base FPS, which made it similar to the frame generation settings in games such as Cyberpunk. At this point, I didn't find it useful at all. Sure, it brings frame generation to all games, including those that don't support it natively, but those are typically older games that my desktop PC, although not very powerful, can still handle at an acceptable level. So I didn't bother to install Windows back on my desktop PC to try it out and kept gaming on Linux after that. Until recently, YouTube recommended me a video in which I discovered a recent update of lossless scaling that introduced dual GPU mode, which was supposed to be very effective because it would use one GPU to render the game itself and another one solely for frame generation. The beauty of this mode is that frame generation no longer worsens the base FPS of the game and the impact on input latency is also greatly improved, at least according to various YouTubers who have tried it. This is extremely tempting, simply because my desktop already has two GPUs in it. I have been using an NVIDIA Tesla M40 GPU on my desktop PC for months now. It is a GPU designed for data centers and doesn't have any video output by itself. For it to be used in a normal desktop PC, there has to be another GPU connected to the monitors. There are many other requirements and limitations of this card. You can check out one of my previous videos for more details if you're interested. Simply put, to use this Tesla GPU, I must have a second GPU to output video signals. The easiest way to achieve this is to use the integrated GPU provided by a modern CPU. In my case, I have been using an AMD Ryzen 5 5600G, which is quite affordable these days and provides decent performance even for some light gaming. After seeing the video about lossless scaling's dual GPU mode, I thought it would be perfect for my use case. The iGPU has been idle during gaming, so why not utilize it for some extra performance? I had wiped out the Windows partition since my last test of the Tesla M40 GPU because I didn't need Windows for my daily computer use, so I had to install Windows again now. Fortunately, the installation went smoothly without any issues. Before trying out the magic of lossless scaling, I had to ensure I was doing it correctly. According to Jesus of AMD GPUs, I needed to make sure the HDMI cable from my monitor was connected to the GPU that would be handling the frame generation work. This wasn't an issue here though, simply because my Tesla GPU doesn't even have an HDMI port. So for anyone using a similar GPU, there's zero chance of doing it incorrectly. After setting the preferred GPU to the AMD iGPU in the main window of lossless scaling, everything was ready to go. And the results were shockingly good. I don't have a super high refresh rate monitor. It's only 1440p and 100 hertz. So I set the frame generation multiplier to 2x and lock the frame rates of games via either in-game settings or other tools. Depending on the games, I'm targeting 60 FPS for extremely demanding titles such as Expedition 33 or 100 FPS for lighter ones such as The Witcher 3. First of all, I can't detect any image quality loss. Everything looks the same to me before and after enabling lossless scaling. The Tesla M40 is a very old GPU, so it can't handle the latest UE5 titles like Expedition 33 running at below 40 FPS most of the time, at medium settings with heavy upscaling to output a target 1440p resolution. So, I just lock the game to 30 FPS and use lossless scaling to double the frame rate, and it feels so much smoother. 
Now, over 90% of the time I'm getting a 60 FPS experience, and with the help of free sync technology from my monitor, it's very enjoyable. Regarding input latency, I don't know how to benchmark it, but from my research, it seems to be much lower in dual GPU mode compared to a single GPU setup. The added latency from the native frame rate is so low, it's hard for me to notice, especially when playing a turn-based RPG. As you may know, Expedition 33, although being a turn-based combat game, still requires decent timing when it comes to parrying and dodging, and I'm confident that the frame generation in dual GPU mode doesn't make me a worse player here. Not that I was particularly good in the first place. Another thing that I adjusted in the settings is the flow scale after some experimentation. As mentioned before, the CPU I'm using is a Ryzen 5 5600G and its integrated GPU is a Radeon Vega 7, which was very decent when released back in 2021, but is quite weak by today's standards. The performance is roughly equivalent to a GT 1030. At 1440p resolution, it cannot always handle 2x frame generation so I have to lower the flow scale to around 75%. Now, for an older game like Forza Horizon 4, my favorite comfort game by the way, if I run it at 1440p ultra settings, I get around 80 FPS, which is very good. But with lossless scaling, I can lock the game to run at 50 FPS and double the frame rate to 100 to match my monitor's refresh rate. This way I get slightly smoother gameplay, which might not be noticeable 99% of the time, but more importantly, I'm using far less computing power from the main GPU. As a result, I get much less noise and heat. And of course, the electricity bill will be less frightening as well. With summer approaching, it's also going to make my life more comfortable in the coming months. So far, I can't think of anything negative about this whole experience. Yes, it's an extra step to toggle the frame generation. But my wife recently bought me this new controller from GameSir, and it has an app to configure any button to a customized keyboard combination. So now I don't even need to reach for the keyboard to toggle lossless scaling anymore. This lossless scaling app costs only $7, and I think this is easily the best purchase I've made this year. Now what about Linux? Am I going to completely abandon Linux now? The answer is obviously no. I don't think Windows 11 is a bad operating system, but over the past years I've gotten used to the snappiness and convenience of the KDE desktop. The more I use Windows 11 for anything other than gaming, the more I miss Linux. For example, even in the latest 24H2 version, the file explorer still hangs more frequently than expected when dealing with a large number of files in one folder. It also constantly tries to make me log in with a Microsoft account, which is annoying. There are still ads that I can't find a way to disable, for instance in the search tab. I've also found that DaVinci Resolve runs more stably and somewhat more efficiently in Linux than in Windows although the Linux version requires more work when it comes to certain codec support. Another thing I need to mention is that NVIDIA GPUs, especially older ones, don't run well on Linux anyway. There's a significant performance loss if the GPU is Pascal architecture or older when running DX12 games. AMD cards, however, sometimes perform better on Linux than on Windows, and can even run games that aren't possible to run on Windows. As a result, in the past few weeks, I still keep all my work-related tasks in Linux and only boot to Windows for certain demanding games. I think my situation is quite unique though, because not many people have a dual GPU setup, and even if they do, they probably have a much more powerful main GPU for gaming. But for now, this is my optimal solution. Windows for gaming and Linux for work. Maybe in the future, if I can afford a better GPU, I'll probably be exclusively on Linux again. But thanks to lossless scaling, I don't feel like I need a new GPU anytime soon.